Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Oris, and today we're learning GraphQL with Postman. GraphQL is defined as Graph Query Language. I like to think of it as an API protocol or paradigm that focuses on comprehensive data retrieval via a query-like syntax, similar to that of Structured Query Language or SQL for databases. GraphQL has two basic operations, query and mutation. Query is like a read operation where you're pulling in data, and mutation is like create, update, or delete operations, which are more about changing the data. Queries and mutations are done via the request body using a JSON syntax, and generally are executed via a post request. Queries and mutations are defined by a GraphQL schema, and in this schema is where we define our variables, functions, and objects. These objects, functions, and variables can also have static types such as strings, numbers, or even custom types. What better way to show off GraphQL and Postman than to use a space-related example? So here we're going to use SpaceX.lands API. This GraphQL API is a community-curated API through open source data via Reddit. And it's not SpaceX official, but with how well they do, I figured they should make it official. Let's go ahead and dive into Postman and start learning GraphQL. Now that we're in Postman, let's go ahead and get started by importing our GraphQL schema and then making a request. The reason why we're importing a GraphQL schema is because it provides us with features in Postman that allow us to auto-complete our query. So it's a convenience, but it isn't necessary to have a GraphQL schema imported in order to execute GraphQL requests. Let's go ahead and click the APIs tab. Here we're going to click New API, and we're going to give it a name, SpaceX GraphQL. Next, we'll give it a version number, which should be 1.0.0. .0. This number doesn't matter. We'll make it a GraphQL schema, and then the schema format will be GraphQL SDL. We'll select File, which is our GraphQL schema, SpaceX land by GraphQL. Click Open, and then Create API. We'll close, and now we're just about ready to get started. So let's go ahead and move to our collections, and in the collections, we're going to create a new request. Here we're going to change our get request to a post request, and here we'll define the URL as api.spacex.land forward slash GraphQL. We don't need any parameters, we don't need any authorization because it's an open GraphQL API to test with, but also just to note, authorization is outside of the scope of GraphQL. So generally, if you're protecting your GraphQL API, you're going to use something like OAuth or basic authorization or whatever fits your needs. Next, we'll go to body. We're going to click GraphQL radio button, and then we're going to refresh the schema. Now, we'll drop down and click our GraphQL schema for SpaceX, and then we're just we're ready to get started. But one more thing I'd like to mention is the GraphQL variables here on the right. This allows us to define variables we can use within our GraphQL query. So I have a, a request already made, and I'm going to go ahead and fill it in and talk you guys through it. So first we define it with open brackets, and then we'll start off by looking at uh, missions. And as you can see, it's starting to auto-complete for us. So on missions, I want to get the mission description. And then I also want to get, let's say, the payloads. And then under payloads, I'd like to get the payload type. And then also the payload mass in kilograms. So now that we have everything ready, let's go ahead and click send. And you'll see here we get a result. So you'll notice at the top, there is a data object there. And that's because all the data returned in a GraphQL query is encompassed in a data object. So then below it, we have missions just that we defined. Then we have our description of the mission, the payloads object, and then the payload type, and then the payload mass in kilograms. So in this case, it was a satellite of 3,325 kilograms sent up to space for that mission. It's pretty neat. So you can see the power of this already because of everything you define in the query is returned back. So let's say I just want everything under payloads. You could think I would just delete the information here, 
but you already notice a red spot here, which indicates a syntax query. And that's because with GraphQL, you have to define the lowest level attribute of the object that you're putting in there, because GraphQL will not make any assumptions on the data that you want. So if we go ahead and click send, we're going to see an error saying syntax error expected name. So it expected at least one attribute of the payloads object to be put in there. So in general, whatever you need from your query, you have to put it in there. It's not going to be inferred. So let's move on to our second query example. And in this case, we're going to utilize the variable section. So in order to define a variable, it's very similar as we do with a query. In this case, it's just a, a JSON type format. So here we're going to make an ID variable. And we're going to give it a value of ID for Postman. Now in our query, we're going to go ahead and write out the word query. You notice the first time we did this, we didn't have that there. And that's because if you leave it out by default, it's being inferred as a query. But since we're defining a variable, we need it in there. So now our variable will be, we use a dollar sign notation. So dollar ID colon, and then the type. So in this case, it's a type of ID. And then here we start to build out the query. Next, we're going to put in, I want to use a search on the launch. And here, I want to search by the launch ID and then pass in that variable we defined earlier. Now, under this launch ID object, I want to get some more things. So here, we're going to get the ID. And then on top of it, I want to get launch site and get some information here. So we'll get the site ID. We'll get the site name the site long name, and then let's get the mission name while we're at it. We'll get the rocket used with the rocket name, and then the rocket type. Now, in order to fill this out, we need to make sure we have an environment variable set. So let's go ahead and use, I'll use Postman Dev as an example. I'm going to go in here and quickly add a variable. So let's go ahead and edit. We're going to add an ID here of 21, and we'll update. And there it is. So now with this set, we should be able to execute the query and get information on launch ID of 21 we got a result. We have our data object at the top again, encompassing all the data we want. And we have our launch with an ID of 21, the launch site for ID 21, which is uh, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station Space Launch Complex 40. <laughs> and we have the rocket name Falcon, and then it's the version 1.1. So it's pretty neat. We're able to define a variable in Postman, define the GraphQL variable, and then go ahead and put that in our query. Next, we're going to do a couple mutation examples. So let's go ahead and clear this out. And here, we're going to create a user. And then for the second example for mutation, we're going to delete a user. So first, we start out by typing out mutation. And in this mutation, there's a function that this endpoint has for insert users. Here, we define some objects. So in this case, we'll have a name, which we'll use my name, a rocket which we'll call Falcon. And then we'll give it a Twitter handle, too. And we'll use my Twitter handler. All right. And then in this case, you need to also tell GraphQL what you're returning. Because if you don't, it's going to give you another syntax error. So here, I'm going to say returning. We'll have the name, the ID, the rocket, and, and Twitter. So now that we have all of this information, we can go ahead and click send. And now you'll see we got a response back. So we successfully created a user named Orist with a UUID there, uh, Rocket Falcon, and the Twitter handle. Now that we have created this user, 
Let's go ahead and delete it just for good cleanup. So first, I'm going to go ahead and copy this ID since I'm going to use that for deleting it. Then in here, we're going to keep this mutation to change the function. In this case, the function is delete users. Then we do a where. Then we do the ID, colon, bracket, underscore EQ, the ID. And then, now that we have this, we have to tell, again, GraphQL what to return after we do this delete. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and do returning the, let's see, the name and the rocket. So now that we've put that information in there, let's go ahead and click Send. Now, as you can see, in our data object, we have our delete users method, and then returning the name, my name, Orist, and the rocket falcon. So in this case, we can verify that we did delete our user with this information here. And that about wraps it up for all the examples I have with GraphQL and Postman. GraphQL is unlike REST in that REST is resource-based. So with every endpoint in REST, you're returning a full object and all the data elements under it. Generally, you're not getting singular elements of those objects like you can with GraphQL. Generally, you would have to do this with query parameters, but this is not always the case as developed by API developers. Also, GraphQL generally has one endpoint that you execute all GraphQL queries against, while with REST, there are multiple endpoints. GraphQL is unlike SOAP in that SOAP is XML-based and GraphQL uses a JSON syntax. GraphQL does not rely on complicated messages and headers. Pros and cons of GraphQL are that it helps you trim down all of the request information that you're trying to get into smaller bytes by sending the query information up front rather than pulling that data back first from the server and then having to filter on that data. So this can have performance implications if you're just trying to get small pieces of data. Thanks for following me and watching along on this video. And I really hope you got to learn a lot more about GraphQL and its differences with REST and SOAP. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want more content like this, go ahead and subscribe and make sure to click that bell for notifications. If you have any questions, please go ahead and submit them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. Thanks again, guys. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.